Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on z-scores and the z-distribution. Today we'll be talking about how to calculate a z-score from a raw score, what those raw scores and z-scores mean, and also how to calculate the area under the normal curve. So to start off, what are z-scores? Z-scores use a normal distribution to allow you to compare raw scores to each other. So it's a method for creating standardized scores when the distribution is normal or symmetrical. So Z-scores are based on the normal distribution, which I have displayed here. And we can actually add to our distribution, which we've used in our previous tutorials, to demonstrate how a z-score will relate to all of the other concepts we've been talking about. So for the z-distribution, a z of zero is where the mean is. Okay, Because a z-score tells you how many standard deviations a particular raw score is from the mean, if a z-score is zero, then that means it is at the mean. It, it isn't a certain number of standard deviations away, it is exactly at the mean for that distribution. Now, if we had added a standard deviation, so we're one above, then of course our z-score would be plus one or positive one. That of course just means that our z-score represents one standard deviation above the mean. That's where our z-score falls. The same can be said of course for a standard deviation of two, so our z-score would be two, in this case, so that means our z-score represents two standard deviations above the mean. And of course, the last one on the positive side is plus three. So these are all representing z-scores and how they fall in the distribution. We start at zero, which is right at the mean, and then the z corresponds to how many standard deviations the raw score is from the mean. Now, going the other direction, we will have negative one, which represents one standard deviation below the mean. So the sign of the z-score tells you whether or not it's above or below. If it's positive, then that means that the z-score is above the mean. If it's negative, then that means it is below the mean. And of course, the number itself tells you how many standard deviations it is away from the mean. So we also have, of course, negative two and negative three representing two standard deviations below the mean and three standard deviations below the mean, respectively. So this is how our z-scores look on our normal distribution. Now, in order to calculate a z-score, what we do, and you can see I put the formula up here at the top for you, uh, the z to calculate a z-score, we need to know each raw score, or the raw score that we want to know the z-score for. So that would, of course, be x. We need to know the mean for our distribution. And then, of course, we need to know the standard deviation. So we're going to take a raw score, subtract from it the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. And I have listed here, of course, the formulas again for those, uh, for your reference. However, you can see at the bottom in my table, I have actually already calculated what the mean and standard deviation for our distribution is. And I've only listed a few students here that we're actually going to work through and show how to calculate the z-scores for. We're going to try to find out what the z-score is for each one of these students on their exam. So how do they relate to the whole distribution? Do they fall above or below the mean? And of course, we can't eyeball this. I mean, when we look at an x-score of 80, for example, we know that's going to be above the mean because the mean is 75. But how much above the mean um, in terms of standard deviations? Is it within one standard? standard deviation? Is it within two, three? Uh, and of course, this becomes important also because it can kind of give us an idea of whether or not these people fall into the average range of being within one standard deviation above or below. So that 68 percentile we were talking about in our uh, other tutorial on normal distributions. Uh, where, so where does it fall in terms of uh, everyone else in the distribution? So let's start off with our first student. So we want to calculate the z-score for this individual. So what we'll do is take the raw score, which is 80. We'll subtract the mean, which we calculated here as being 75. And then we divide that by 7. What we have here is 5 divided by 7. And that will give us, of course this is all positive, a uh, 0.71. Now the actual number is 0.7142857, but we're going to round to two decimal places for all of these. So it will be positive 0.71. So we could actually enter that into our table uh, over here. So we'll go ahead and enter that in, that our z-score 
for our student who has a raw score of 80 is positive 0.71. Okay, so we can go on and do the next one. So we'll go ahead and calculate the z score for 72. So we take 72, subtract 75, divide by 7. And in this case, we will get negative 3 over 7. So don't draw that negative sign. It's important because that tells us what direction above or below the mean our z score is. So if it is negative, remember we said that that means that it is below the mean. So in this case, negative 3 over 7 ends up being negative 0.43. So that means if the student has a raw score of 72, their z-score is negative 0.43, which means that their score falls 0.43 standard deviations below the mean. So not only does it tell us that they're within that 68 percentile range, which is plus or minus one standard deviation, it also tells us that, of course, uh, it is below the mean. So we have negative... 0.43. The next one is 55. So we will take 55, subtract 75, divide by 7. This will be negative 20 over 7, which will end up being negative 2.86. So here we can see that this z-score means that the individual, uh, in terms of the entire distribution, their raw score falls 2.86 standard deviations below the mean. So they're quite a ways away from what the average score is considered to be in terms of being away from 75. So we can enter that, those, of course, into our table. But just to move on, we're going to go ahead and go to the next raw score, which is 68. So 68 minus 75 divided by 7 is equal to negative 7 over 7, which is negative 1. So this tells us that someone with a raw score of 68 falls at a z-score of negative 1. So that means they are one standard deviation exactly below the mean. Now for our last one, to calculate the z, we have a score of 90 for our raw score. We subtract 75 from that, divide by 7, which will be 15 over 7, which gives us positive 2.14. So this tells us that if someone, like this student who scores a 90 on this exam, actually scores 2.14 standard deviations above the mean. So they are uh, quite a ways above the mean, just like the individual who scored a 55 is quite a ways below the mean. Each one of these individuals is outside that 95 percentile range that we were talking about. So this demonstrates how you would actually go about the process of calculating a z-score.